What's going on guys, it is Bucky and welcome to your 22nd C++ tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking to you guys about a different kind of loop than the while loop. This is called the for loop. Now if you guys remember, a while loop was basically something that took a bit of code and ran it over and over and over again. This isn't only for while loop but all loops do the exact same thing. They take a bit of code and they run it over and over and over again. The only difference is different loops you have to set them up in different kinds of ways so anyways I already told you guys how to build a while loop simple enough so now let's go ahead and take a take a look at this index for a for loop and the first thing you need is the word F O R now after this you add parentheses now inside your parentheses your for loop requires three pieces of information a starting value an ending value and how much do you want to increment it by for example if we started at 10 and we ended at 20 and we wanted to increment it by 2 it would be 10 12 14 16 18 20 um, so let's go ahead and build a simple loop that starts at 1 ends at 10 and it increments by 1 pretty much 1 to 10 counting by 1's so the first thing we need is to initialize a variable so int x equals 1 now every piece of information you separate it with a semicolon now after this it's pretty much the same as the test in the while loop how long do you want to let your loop run? Well, let our loop run as long as x is less than 10. So it's going to go from 1 to 9 because remember, when it gets to 10, 10 is not less than 10. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But how does it know to go 1 at a time instead of 2 at a time or 5 at a time? Well, that's that last piece of information that this loop needs. x plus plus, and if you remember from the last tutorial, this means add 1 to x every time. Um, you can also do x plus equals 1, but x plus plus is a lot easier. It saves you one character and, you know, only two different characters. But anyways, I'm rambling. Enough of me talking. So basically, the syntax for a for loop is this. Initialize a variable with a starting value, give it an ending value, and say how much you want to increment it by each time. So now we would just do something like this. See how print out x on the screen and print it out on a new line every time so let's go ahead and build and run this and see what we get one two three four five six seven eight nine so we started at one and we ran the loop the whole time as long as x was less than 10 so that's why 10 isn't print out because 10 is not less than 10 but all these values are and since we wrote x plus plus it went by one each time one two three four five kept adding one until we got to nine so now, let me go ahead and show you a different, uh, you know, we'll just add some different values so you guys can clearly see. Uh, instead of 1, let's start at 5. By the way, 0 and 1 are going to be your most basic starting points. But, you know, you can use anything you want, but people typically stick with 0 or 1. Um, let's go all the way to 50, and let's go ahead and increment it by 5 by writing x plus equals 5, which means add 5 to x each time and assign that to the new value. So now if you go ahead and build and run this, we go ahead and we have 5 all the way to 45 by 5s and we start at 5 right here. Well, all the way till we were less than 50 and that's why it doesn't print out 50 because 50 is not less than 50, it's equal to 50, but 45 and all these values are less than 50 and we told it to add 5 to x each time. Simple enough. So basically starting point ending point how much you want it to change each time so now those are you know the basic bucky terms but if you're taking a test I want to give you guys the technical terms this is called initialization where you start off a variable this is called the loop continuation condition basically when you're on the end and this is called the increment so with those three things it has all the information that your loop needs where to start where to end how much to go by so this is a really basic example of the for loop. All we did is print out numbers and we didn't really do anything useful except learn the for loop. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys of an example of why the for loop, you know, it's basically this. I'm going to show you guys the for loop in a cool program and I'm going to show you guys how it's going to be used to do stuff like calculate how much money you can make in the stock market. So if you don't know what I'm talking about yet, just check out my next tutorial because it's going to be awesome and we're going to be building a super cool program. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.